How's it going, everyone? Welcome to the new year. I got my apple juice here to celebrate because I'm going to be going over the tools and technologies that I've been using and that I plan to use throughout 2023. When you're working at a company, you're kind of forced to use whatever software tools that support their existing tech stack. And this is could be a good thing because I've been introduced to software that I probably would have never used. The bad thing is I was forced to learn a lot of software that was obsolete or that I never used again. For the first time this year, I'm able to choose what technologies I want to use and learn. Of course, they still need to be applicable to whatever task I'm trying to solve, but say I need to use a database, I can choose whether I want to use SQL or NoSQL. I have 100% autonomy over that. So my daily driver naturally is going to be the tool that I use to write all my code, and that's currently Visual Studio Code. I'll be honest, I never had extensively used VS Code before. I know, I know it's, it's very popular. Um, I'd used Visual Studio in the past. It's similar, um, but I've, I've mostly been a backend developer, so I haven't really needed a whole lot of use for VS Code. I have used Sublime and Atom, but it seems like all the cool kids are using VS Code nowadays. Uh, the main reason I've been using it is because my front end code is written in JavaScript, well, technically TypeScript, and my backend code is written in Python. So VS Code allows me to have everything open in one window. If I was using something like PyCharm, I'd have to have my backend code open in that application and then have another application for my front end code. So it's a small reason why I use it, but that's the reason. Um, I don't really know the ins and outs of VS Code. I just install the plugins whenever they recommend it. And I really just use it as a glorified text editor. The next thing I'm using is React. And like I mentioned, I'm using TypeScript. I'm using TypeScript because people told me it was better. Initially, I didn't really like it because I kept running into typing errors um, and it, it just felt like it was slowing me down. But I've actually learned to really like it and it's probably saved me uh, from falling a lot of into a lot of JavaScript pitfalls. And I come from a strongly typed background. I'm a Java and C++ developer, so it's very natural to me. I'm also using React Bootstrap for my for styling my components. Uh, for my backend, I'm using Flask, and if I could go back, I would 100% not use Flask. I would definitely go with like a Node Express setup, or at least Django, which is the other Python framework, because Flask is very limiting. Um, I used it because people said it was lightweight, which generally means that it's good, but lightweight also means that there's a lot of features lacking. So for example, their ORM SQL Alchemy is pretty trash, and I've had a lot of trouble with it. Uh, but I'm at the point where I'm committed to using Flask, so I just have to deal with it. For source control, I'm using Git, which is pretty much the standard nowadays, and I host all my code on GitHub, which has private repositories for free, which if you're an OG like me, you know that you used to have to pay for it. I'm also using Fork, which uh, is, a, is a GUI for Git. However, I, I don't really use it that much anymore because with VS Code, you, it has most of this stuff built in. So if I want to like create a branch or commit or push and pull code, I'll just use VS Code for that. If I'm doing if I'm doing something a little bit more advanced, like a rebase, I will use Fork for that. I'm using Linode for all my cloud hosting. Uh, so my server is hosted on Linode. My database is hosted on Linode. That's pretty much it. Um, but nowadays, everyone uses some kind of cloud hosting for their website because it's super convenient, it's reliable, and it's fairly cheap. Um, at least Linode is. AWS and Azure are a ripoff. And they're a total pain to set up. I don't know if you've ever seen AWS's interface. It's pretty confusing, uh, but I love how simple and intuitive Linode setup is. So, so far, I'm pretty happy with it. My Linode database is a MySQL database um, and MySQL Workbench is, um, it's probably the most, uh, most popular client out there for MySQL and it handles everything that I need to do. So I'm not really looking for a change. So my website executes user code which there's no way that I'm going to be executing user code on my server because that would leave me exposed to potentially malicious code. Uh, so I use Docker as sort of an, an encapsulated environment to do that. It's not really what Docker was traditionally designed for, uh, but it works for me. Um, traditionally, Docker is used to containerize running applications, so they're easier to manage and port to other systems. I'm also using the Python SDK to interface with Docker because I'm doing everything programmatically. I'm using Postman, which I've been using since like 2015 for all my backend API testing. I'm sure there are probably other tools that have come out since then, but I'm, I really love Postman and, and its features. I use it for whenever I'm implementing a new endpoint in my backend, I'm using a REST API. So I always first test it with Postman, make sure the JSON is formatted properly and there are no errors. And then I'll, and then I'll implement the front end portion 
knowing that everything in the back end is working properly. Um, other tools, just continuing to use terminal. This is mostly for SSHing into my Linode server. I feel like every software developer, okay, every good software developer should be comfortable using the command line because you might not always have a nice interface to work with. Um, the only way that I'm able to interact with my server is through SSH on the command line. So it's important to uh, really just be comfortable with all the commands there and be able to quickly move around your operating system using a command line. Um, I'm using Vim for any type of editing files in the terminal. I'm team Vim over Emacs. I don't have anything against Emacs. I just close my shell if I ever get stuck in it because I have no idea. I still don't know to this day how to exit out of Emacs when I get stuck in it. For my web server, I'm using Nginx, just probably the most popular web server out there. Not much to say about it, does everything I needed to do uh, with the web server. You pretty much just set it up once and you don't really need to touch it after that. I'm also using Redis, which is an in-memory data store. It's used for super quick lookups on things that you don't need to store in a traditional database. I use it for two things specifically. For my user management, I do I use server-sided sessions. I don't use JWT tokens. So Redis maps a user ID to a session token to authenticate users. I also use it for rate limiting. So when a user executes their code, I spin up Docker, run the code, and uh, deallocate it. This is computationally expensive. So I use this to, uh, I think that's like three, you can only submit three times per every 10 seconds. And that's just so no one blast my server and takes takes it down. And then finally, I'm using Azure DevOps for task management. Uh, I don't use the Kanban board or anything, but I do like to separate everything into epics, features and stories, which is a uh, it's an agile thing. But I really just use this to keep track of everything just so I don't there's a lot of stuff going on and I don't want to have to remember it all. So I'm pretty happy with this current tech stack. Uh, I don't really see myself making any dramatic changes. Um, I might swap a few things here in and out, um, but I'm glad that I've been able to finally land on a tech stack I've been happy with. Like I mentioned, the only thing I don't like is Flask, but you know, what are you going to do? So I'll check back with you guys next year, which 2024, I mean, I can't believe that's less than a year away. Um, but you know, I'll check back in. We'll see if anything's changed, see what other new technologies have come out. Um, but as always, thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, keep on coding.